What's up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We're back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is a place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom and become the rock star in your market. And we have a couple of genuine rock stars uh, on the show today that are actually going to show us how to do it. And we're going to talk about the takeaways that you can learn from their experience uh, promoting music and, and working in the music industry and all the cool things that go along with that and all the things that you can take away from their experience and what they've done that is actually working. So before we bring those guys, guys in which i'm super super excited to talk about today uh we'll talk about uh we'll bring in someone that i'm not super excited to see my my <laughs> co-host and co-partner in crime uh in the co-pilot seat as always greg mcdaniel greg what's up today you're such a douche <laughs> god hey man i am super excited you know derek is i can't wait to hear from derek of course we have our our local favorite uh, rock and roll legend you know stefan adika who just closed three deals from doing uh, cold circle prospecting from what I'm doing. The guy is the king of Central Valley real estate. Central Coast, not Central Valley, Central Coast. Um, <laughs> but, dude, okay, on a serious note, so check it out. Okay. Um, I, uh, I received a package today when I got into the office, and it was from uh, one of the guys that I did, a, a Dan Jacobson. He, I did the McDaniel Challenge with him. So we sent, we were talking about a book called The Book of Awesome. This book is literally awesome. It's all these little things that are awesome in life that kind of that kind of keeps you reminding of how awesome life can be. And he sent this to me. Um, and we were talking about uh, beer and his buddy. So also he sent me a growler <laughs> for for the uh, Sturgis you know brewery system up there that he has with one of his buddies. So dude, Dan Knuckles to you, man. I really appreciate it. And uh, God, we got the greatest fans, dude. And then Carla. There's another gal that we did some stuff with. She sent me another beautiful handwritten thank you letter. So, guys, it means the world that you guys actually take a moment and you send me stuff. I keep them all literally next to my desk. I have a, I have a growing stack of all my thank you cards. I keep every one of them. I read every one of them. So thank you beyond words for being such an amazing audience. We love you to death. But today is going to be awesome. Derek is amazing. Um, and you guys will listen to Stefan a little bit on how he did some of his circle prospecting. And, guys, sharpen your handy Daniel prehistoric writing tools called a pen or a pencil and get ready to take notes because I got my pad paper ready to go. You should, too. That's right. All right. Well, before we bring uh, Stefan in, I want to bring in Derek Sherini, which is uh, so a personal hero of mine, member, past member of Dream Theater, Platypus, Planet X, uh, Black Country Communion, and now uh, Sons of Apollo, the latest project. So, Derek, welcome. How are you, gentlemen? What's happening? Pleasure to be here. Cool, man. Glad you're here. Are yeah, you very, in, very is stoked. One of you in, is one of you in Central California near Santa Cruz? That's my hometown, you know. That's uh, Yeah, that's me. So I'm moving up there to uh, to be close to Chris Lockhead get more involved in the Legends and Losers podcast that I produced for him. So, yeah, I'll be uh, – he lives on uh, Fresno Street, two blocks on the beach. Oh, fantastic. Do you, have you spent time there? A little bit, yeah, yeah. So we went out. He took me on a big tour of, like, Pleasure Point and uh, biked all around that uh, just here last week. Yeah. Oh, it's great. That's totally where I grew up. I love it. My mom and yeah. sister still live up there. I try to get up as much as possible. Yeah? Oh, uh, it's awesome. That's yeah, it's a great place. That's actually the end game is I'd like to retire up there as soon as my uh, my oldest, my youngest son will turn 18 in 10 years. So the game plan is to, uh, to buy this house I'm in in Burbank and then just roll forward and go to uh, Santa Cruz. So maybe I'll see you up there. That'd be awesome. I look forward to it. Yeah, you got to see so your, your family's up there. Stefan was saying that you're, uh, that you're up there quite a bit. Yeah, I try to get up there like two, two, three times a year. From where I'm at, it's a, a five-hour drive, and I always stop and see Stefan on the way because he's two hours from L.A. Yeah, or mm -hmm. three hours, I think, from L.A. I forget which one. Like but he's halfway point, and then he's, I always go up to Santa Cruz. Yeah. Well, speaking of Stefan, we might as well officially introduce you. So Greg, Greg alluded to you being on the show, but we haven't officially brought you in. First of all, Stefan, welcome. Tell people where you're at and what you do. Paso Robles, California, Central Coast, and I am the real estate agent of Paso, the king. Come That's on what now. I'm doing. You're the real That's estate rock I'm... star. Come on. Real estate rock star. Well, it's not a time to be modest. Well, you know, I'm just getting my feet wet in this business we call real estate here, learning from the best, you guys. And, uh, you know, I'm just a humble real estate guy, just, you know, just trying out. You know, I only did three closings last week. <laughs> just, <laughs> are, that's, awesome. that's pretty amazing just, i'm totally hey, impressed with that let, let me tell Congrats. you something it was amazing it was getting the listings is easy dealing with the client is a whole nother thing but you know what did it now i'm looking for more and i'm really happy i mean I, here i am derek as you know 
left LA, came out here to the Central Coast, not knowing a soul, using the magic device called the telephone, and I made it happen. Using a little script from, from Greg and a little touch from what Matt does from there, I took their lesson and I made, made it rain. So now now, I want, now I'm gonna make it fucking poor. So all three of those sales were a result of the cold calling? Cold calling, yeah. Who, I, you know how wow. people start out in the business? We'll get your aunts, we'll get your uncles, we'll get this, we'll get that. Fuck that. I'm doing the Adika way. I'm going to do get nobody, get nothing, and make something. And that's how I did it. <laughs> so, you know? Stefan, what, wow. what, what, what's your, what, what's your, what's your, what's your, uh, your little line? Do you want to, are you here to fuck around or party? We're here to party or are fuck you, around. Are you going to party or fuck around? That's my line. <laughs> that's it. When you go into your next listening presentation, everybody, that's exactly what you're going to say. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, you know, are, are you going to party or are you going to fuck around? Because we're here to do business. <laughs> we, that, now, 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 to rewind, to, to, to lead us into Derek's world, I met Derek. I was working at a shoe store and I had a friend named Eric Singer. Eric and Derek were roommates. And at the time, Eric was playing, me and Eric and I were playing with Gilby. And then that finished. And then I met Derek, right, Derek? We met at, right. we met at, we met at the shoe store. And I on had Melrose. Was, on Melrose. I was doing nothing. And, uh, just I, I was a wannabe. I was a wannabe. And and and, and, and I did. I never thought that. I was just thought you were a nice guy. I, I was a wannabe. But long story short, I met Sherinian, and then I got to get a taste of 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 the, the the dream. And then I realized, hey, now the dream has passed me by, and I'm getting a little old, and I want to make some real money. And then when I moved to Paso, I got into real estate. That was my my whole thing. Okay. <laughs> And then Derek. Well, I'll say this though. I'll say this for Stefan. You played with how many Hall of Fame, Rock and Roll Hall of Famers? If you I had got, to make a list. You know, I'm just a humble guy, man. But I'm not going to name drop here. No. You know, I did. Get, I did get Go to ahead. go. On, I'm not a name dropper, but I've been on stage with Alice Cooper, with Dee Dee Ramone. Um, I, I mean, I have, I have all our friends. I was the first to play with a Hall of Famer, right, Derek? Eddie Van. Yes. Eddie, Eddie Van, Van Halen. Van how Halen. can I forget? How can I forget that? How can I forget? Did you Eddie play with Van Brian? Halen? Isn't there a picture of you and Brian May one night? Thank you, so, thank, I mean, you for, oh thank, thank you for dropping the know. names for me. Yes, yes, that is true. But Eric Singer brought Brian May to that gig. But yes, doesn't it doesn't matter. You, the bottom line is you stayed and, on stage with him. That's right. And I'm just a scrappy rock and roll guy from New York City. And people who fucking sat in their beds and practiced forever are going, what the fuck? Him? <laughs> and you know what? For everybody watching that doubted me, that's right, motherfuckers. You could jerk off in your room because I got to do it and you didn't. <laughs> ladies, and gentlemen, the, ladies and gentlemen, the Connor, the Connor McGregor of base. The same kind of fuck <laughs> I'm going to do real estate. Let me tell you guys something. The strong will stay strong. And for you weak real estate agents in Paso that don't believe in yourself, move, move the fuck over because I'm taking your clients and taking your business. And I'm going to do it my way. And I'm going to do it your client's way. And you guys could retire because I'm here. I the, love king, the king is here. Fear. We just got to do, do an episode on client control so Stefan doesn't blow his own brains out with, with five <laughs> listings at a time. It's a, wait, wait, right. wait, hey, wait till I get 10 is in a there, week. You're going to see me standing here with no right. pants on. That's right. <laughs> Are there, are there, is there an ethics code of poaching uh, clients in real estate, or is it just Wild West out there? Hey, yeah, unless there's paperwork it. signed. <laughs> it's my way. It's my way. Right. It's okay. my way. So De Derek Sherinian, when I met him, he was in the famous band Dream Theater, okay, which Matt, you know a lot about. Greg mm -hmm. knows nothing, so you need to talk right now, Greg. And when I met Derek, hey. I'm like thinking about this musical great guy. And he's a good looking guy. Look at him. He looks like an Adonis. Look at him. Look at this man. So when I <laughs> met him, I went with my friend, Eric Singer. We went to his show. And I'm watching this, this masterpiece music. But the one thing that was missing, you couldn't see the Mozart of the band. He was like in the shadow. And I was annoyed because I'm like, this talent up there, and he's not being shown. So the next day, I called Derek up. I go, Derek, I go, your band's great, but... Yeah, I don't see you up there. And, and, and so guys in the fucking audience, you need some chicks here, some women, and bring some sexy. And I, I, I go, you need to think, make some black love, a little shebang, shebang, ba -na 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 -bum, ba -bum. I go, Derek, I want you to get lava lamps, rugs. I want it to be boogie nights. I want you to bring the sex oh back God. into this business. Oh make it God. sexy, Derek. I'm going to hand you now the yeah, floor. Derek, and what happened how, did that, how did that work out for you? And I'm like in awe listening to him, like, give this whole spiel. And I'm like, I do? And he goes, yes, you do. 
And I go, maybe you're right, you know. And so he lit a bug in my ass. And so I get to New York to um, rehearsals at SIR Studio. And before the band showed up, we're on the soundstage. I went to, like, some magic or arts district or whatever, and I bought these huge lava lamps, like 10 of those <laughs> jumbo-sized ones, a white shag carpet, these, like, a round TV from the 70s, and I would just have static behind and I created this whole, like, like 70s pimp, like, love lounge. It was fucking hysterical, but there was a real vibe to it. So then I remember they came in, the uh, the guys come in, and the guitar player goes, what the hell is this? And then the drummer goes, I love it. <laughs> and so um, I ended up taking it on tour, and a lot of the, uh, the hardcore fans were just going, what the fuck is going on? And I knew it was kind of preposterous, but it felt fun, and it just it was fucking memorable for sure. And so, eventually, <laughs> the whole band. Well, and it, and it fits, the whole band it fits your thing. personality. It was fun, and I loved it. Yeah. And then eventually, the drummer got white shag on the uh, on his drum riser, and then there was lava left all the way across the back, so <laughs> it ended up uh, becoming an infection. Now, now you see that if I could sell the keyboard player from Dream Theater a makeover, then I should be selling real estate, right? That's right. You can convince and anyone of anything. To me. And, and that's no. that's it. No, that's you, my story. Stephen, here's the thing: you, I think that you did as well as you did in music, way better than some players that are actual musicians that study and practice. You came in because of your personality you made some really good friends who wanted to have you around in these situations and you used your likable your likability to your advantage. And I think that that's what's gonna really happen in your real estate too, as long as you can turn that and channel that into whatever you're doing. That's what you got the money, baby. That's it. I got the I got the money. You know what? I got a taste of it and me being Jewish getting a taste of three deals closing <laughs> Dude, now I got a taste. I'm like a pit bull tasting blood. Move the fuck. I'm, I'm out for the kill. Be, kill or be killed. So then, you know, while I'm trying to figure out this thing, real estate, as a new agent, you know, the brokers are there taking your money and, and, and you know, there's no help. They just want to gouge you and you're really on your own. The test is one thing, but the business is like, what do I do now? So I was YouTubing and scoping people out and then I see a bunch of people. Then I see this this guy, you know, doing this pitch and he met Greg McDaniels. I'm like, well, he's kind of funny. He's a little like me, but he's clean looking. And then I'm like, no tattoos, just a clean looking guy. And then so, I'm like, then I'm like, ana- know, then I'm analyzing no him. No, but, no, he didn't have, he, he was missing the, he was missing the spice of a Dika, but he had a Dika. And then I'm like, uh, 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 oh, my, this is great. I have yeah, tattoos. I'm covering uh, tattoos. I just put them on we'll the so he can't see them. Hey, hey, McDaniel, it's our show now. Just shh. When the hand goes oh up, the God. mouth goes shut. So now, <laughs> so now, I'm like experiment. I'm like, we look following this guy, Derek, and I'm like watching. And then one day I go, I'm gonna call him up because I like what he's saying, but I want to pick his brain a little bit. So then I, I go, okay, I'm gonna call him. But then I felt like, you know, and no offense, I love all gays, and 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 trust me, I just I don't go that way. If it's gay out there, you know, don't get mad at me. And I go, I go, I hope this guy doesn't think I'm gay. So I called him one day and it was very like a long conversation and I liked him. And then I joined their rock star. They, you know, they made some money off of me, which would be nice if I get it back. And, 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 <laughs> and, and, and then I took what they had and I applied myself. And for me, but before that, I told Greg, I played with this guy, that guy, this guy. He thought I was bullshitting him. Mm-hmm. They, thought, they thought I was lying. And, and so, you know, I, I was trying to get in the door. Would you say that you've taken the tools that you learned from them and you've improved upon them and built upon? Hundred percent. Without he had, and, and, he had with, the Adika spice. A hundred percent. Without these fucking guys that you're looking at, Derek, I would fucking, right. I would not be, I wouldn't have got the three, I would have got the closest, but not as fast with their help. And and they're not paying me for this. This is really, really true. And I really thank them as much as I bullshit Greg. I love Greg and Matt. And they, they've done a lot for me, and I give them a round of applause and what they do for other agents. So now that you, Derek, have your thing, I think I found out that Matt was a fan of Dream Theater. I'm like, what a small world. I'm good friends with the guy that was in Dream Theater. And of course, again, they thought I was lying. Uh-huh. And now here's proof to show that not only did I get three deals from listening to the, the, mass, the, the junior grandmaster and his co pilot, Johnson, I also know people. And now here we are today after my three deals, my three success, Derek Sherinian, formerly of Dream Theater, 
with his new band, Sons of Apollo, featuring Mike Portnoy from Dream mm -hmm. Theater, Billy mm -hmm. Sheen on bass, Bumblefoot with Guns N' Roses, and your singer, Derek? Jeff Scott Soto. Jeff, mm -hmm. Jeff, Jeff Scott, Scott Soto on There vocal. you go. Now, this is a band that's about to explode. They're about to do a lot of stuff. Derek Schwinnian just came back from Europe in New York, all right? Did his press conference, and now he's here live. How the brand, yourself, make fucking money, get fucking laid, and do it the right way. Go ahead, Derek. <laughs> I love wow. it. Yeah, that is so, quite an intro. I think, um, the, um, I think the common denominator here of what, what you guys do and what I try to do in music or anything to be successful, I think the key word is audacity. And it's the yeah. audacity to pick up the phone and, and maybe have someone tell you to fuck off because <laughs> you're intruding upon their family time. You know what I mean? But you're still, you know that if you pick it up a hundred times, you might close 2%, but still that 2% is your money and you have to go through the process. A lot of people don't have the audacity to knock on the door to, to say, hey, you know what? I have a skill set or a talent. And, and you should employ me or to sell their idea of a business or whatever. It's audacity, balls, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, the key to what, you know, I see in you guys. To be able to do that, I couldn't do it. I mean, that's a different kind of balls, but it's, it's awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, how, how do you apply that, Derek? Besides, uh, besides recording one of the greatest rock albums ever, self-proclaimedly, um, wh where does the audacity come in for you? The audacity, well, for starters, is as a keyboard player, which is the least popular rock instrument above the accordion or, or whatever. <laughs> the no, flute. it's a difficult. No, it has. It's it's, uh, it's looked down upon, and for yeah. good reason. A lot of the keyboard, I'd say, 99% of keyboard players that play in rock have cheesy sounds, and they don't know how to play along with distorted guitars and a rock band. So, understandably keyboards get a bad name, but if you listen to the great bands like, you know, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, uh, Yes, I mean, the keyboards can be done very killer if it's done correctly. So I try to emphasize on that and then trying to sell my skill set to name players that were already famous to get in that elite club and not just be in the Hanyak, like playing nightclubs and Johnny's Crab Shack or Bon um, Mitzvah. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but that was like not what I had on my plan, you know. You didn't so want to be a Hanyak. I want to fast track it. I knew that it was going to take audacity to approach these players and people of influence that were higher up than me and make them believers in me. So when they thought about keyboard players, my name would be the first, you know, name or base that comes up. And that was my Derek, end game. There are question for you on that one. You know, there there's a metric fuck ton of musicians out there and a ton of you know keyboard artists and everything else. You know, both in real estate and in music, you need to make yourself stand out. I mean, did you do something? Was there some sort of shtick that you had that could make you stand out? Because a lot of people when they're in real estate and in music, they need to pull pull above the noise. What was that thing yeah. that you did? You've obviously been ultra successful. And uh, my way, by the way, my buddy uh, Carlos, who's been a long lifetime lifetime friend of mine, is on. He's a musician with his buddy Ben Orm, who was in a major metal band for a while. He's saying what up. He loves your. He's a fan of uh, everything you've done, and he thinks he thinks Adika's hilarious. Total sidetrack. Oh, okay. um, cool. Um, and uh, but what what did you do, man? What, what, mm -hmm. How did you stand above the crowd? It's not so much a shtick. I think. Um... I just have a very distinct style of playing. And I, like when I was growing up, I would listen to more guitar players like Eddie Van Halen. When I heard Eruption, it, I really made the connection that, wow, you can really put your personality through your instrument and do things that no one else does so people can hear your playing and identify you from your signature sound. To me, that's the most important attribute uh, or asset that a musician can have is to be identified. I don't care. There's people that can play a million notes. There's little four-year-old Korean girls that can play Chopin etudes effortlessly, but what do they create? It's about creating and coming up with a style that people can uh, identify with. And I just have a way of playing that's more aggressive and more emotive and signature sound than, than any of the other keyboardists out today and i'm not saying it in a braggadocious way it's just a fact 
and Same. it's buttressed no, that, by that my is body. A, of, it's buttressed. It's buttressed by my body of work and the diversity. If you look at my my pedigree, which is an octopus pedigree, I've run out of fingers to list the names, but it'll go from you know Buddy Miles to Alice Cooper to Kiss to Dream Theater to Inge Malmsteen, Billy Idol, Black Country Communion. I mean, it just keeps going, and now Sons of Apollo. It's the diversity, but all of these bands that I've mentioned are all at the top of their field in that genre. And so I've been able to put my sound and keep my identity and no matter what style I play with or what artist. And so I think that's yeah, it's, it's funny. And it's funny you mentioned my identity because, Greg, you and I have talked about this on the show a lot. <clears throat> so when you're building out a, a rock star business, in other words, a business that's built around you as, as the rock star in the business, you do have to have that. And, and the more that you develop a signature style and a signature way of doing business, whether that's the, in your advertising and your marketing, or if it's your, in your client service, that's extremely yeah. powerful. And you can use that to set yourself apart. Now, if you want to then grow beyond that and start pulling yourself out of the business, then you have to systematize some of those things and train people how to do it. But in the beginning stages, like Stefan's got it right, like be yourself, build a business around your personality, then you can start to systematize it and market yourself. But uh, yeah, it's, I mean, Greg, you, you talked about a little bit on the show where you really decided at one point just to be who you are and stop, uh, essentially stop trying yeah. to be a smaller version of your dad. Yeah. You know, I, I, I finally broke out of my shell. Like Derek, you have your flavor. Stefan, you have your flavor. Matt, you do you. And I finally decided to do me. And the, the, what really is the interesting part about that is, is the, is the honesty and the, and the transparency. Once you actually break out of what the norm and society tells you to do, where you're supposed to be PC, be fucking boring and be like cardboard and be like everybody else out there. When you decide to have a little flavor to you, a little sizzle, people will respect that and come towards it because they're so used to mum bum bullshit that once they're like, Oh, Hey, look at this guy. Look at this gal. They're doing it their style. They're doing it their way. People resonate with that. I mean, that's stuff. And that's why you and I, you know, became friends because like, dude, this guy's owning who he is. He's like me. Don't ever be afraid to be who you are. Because that is unique. I mean, it's like 400 trillion to one that your parents had sex at the exact second they had sex to make you. And so you're a unique creature by 400 trillion. So might as well show that off to the world. I mean, that's what one thing I think that maybe, Derek, you can reiterate this. And Stefan, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Once both of you stepped out of your shells and you started doing what you do your way, I mean, what was the what was the time frame and genesis of becoming where you are in today's both rock music and with real estate? Derek, we'll start with you. Well, I mean, to start with career, I got my first big break in 1989 with Alice Cooper, and that was the first time I elevated from like national club level to playing in an international act, being on MTV, world tours, all of that stuff. So 89, what's 28 years now? It's insane how much time has gone by. And it's been um, a struggle. I haven't been in one band like Metallica for 28 years. I'm like, a, was a um, sideman for many years. I had a few of my own projects and solo deals, but everything was supplemented. And it's been a grind. And even up to this point, until uh, earlier last year when I got my record deal with Sons of Apollo. It was just a really a blessing because it's the first time that I've ever gotten a record deal for my band from a major label where I get to be the producer and main songwriter and wow. you know co-founder of the band. And so it took everything that I had to do up until that point built to this. Now it's yet to be seen how much of a success it's gonna be. We all really have strong hopes uh, we think we made a great record. We have major label support. Our, la our record labels across the world are totally excited and are going to be, you know, financing this. And all the journalists, I've already done about 100 interviews so far. And I can tell, I've been doing this a long time, I can tell in their voice and I can see that gleam in their eyes when I do the face-to-faces that they all love the record and know that it's something special. And, you know, it all comes down to you can put your best foot forward, but in music, it is subjective, and you do have to, you know, hope for some timing and some luck in conjunction with your best efforts. 
Yeah, yeah. but that's very much very synonymous with real estate. I mean, there's a lot of noise. Everyone's trying to be, you know, that top dog in whatever industry. And what I heard you say there, Derek, is that in music, you did the hustle, the grind. You did the unseen long hours. You you went through multiple different changes, you know, but you went with, you rolled with the punches and you kept growing. But you were always a student of your craft. You never stopped learning and growing. And, Absolutely, you know, yeah. And that's what a lot of people yeah. don't do. They try yeah. to like, learn for a little bit, then they expect to be the rock star. Learn for a little bit, and then then, then to expect to be the rock star, and then they fail out because they're like, oh, I'm not I'm not in the limelight. I'm not I'm not the number one best agent. I'm not the number one best selling artist. You know, but you have to do the hard work, and you did it. Absolutely. You know, it was a, my favorite story as a kid. My mom would tell me the three little pigs and how you build your foundation. One made it out of, of straw, one out of sticks, and one out of stone. And I equated that as as a young musician learning my craft, I wanted a very solid musical foundation so I could go and sit in and play with any musician fearlessly and know that I could keep up with anyone and have it a really strong and be able to play a multitude of styles comfortably. And, you know, that's, you know, the strong foundation. You know, that's, yeah, that's, awesome. that's the cool part. So, you know, Stefan, you were in the rock world for a long period of time. We've talked about kind of who you played with, what you're done. And dude, that's, I mean, yes, I did think you were complete bullshit when you first talked to me. <laughs> um, but you know what? <laughs> but you know, you, you've made a successful transition from the music industry, right? Which you still have a huge heart for and you're very well respected in that business, but you made a decision to get into real estate. You know, when it comes to doing the hard unseen work, Walk me through really quickly what you did and how you did it. Because you went to the Central Coast. You knew nobody. You went there for love because you had a beautiful wife and a little baby, and you brought your son up there. So your whole family moved up to a new town. You know, how did, what did you have to do? Like you, when you started in the business, when you met Derek at that shoe shop, and then now let's say that this is a different version of that because now your shoe shop is now Paso Robles and you're meeting new people. What did you have to do to be able to close the, the three deals that you just closed last week from doing cold calls and the new listing you have coming on and another property they have on the market right now? What did you have to do, man? Because I know people are like, well, how did Stefan do it? He, meant, he just probably has all his rock star connections and that's how he did it. No, uh, no. Walk, tell, no, tell us a little bit about it. It wasn't like that. And let me tell you, when, you, when you're making a change when you're older, it's scarier and it's harder. So people put this fear in their head and that stops them from moving forward. And I'm a human being. I have that fear too. But then also I'm from Brooklyn and then I shut out that fear, fear and I said, you're in the deep end of the pool. Are you going to just fucking drown and die? No, you're going to find a way, figure out a way and then do it. And how I did it, you know, Taking the test, that was a challenge. I'm not a book smart guy. And it was that was the hardest part was taking the test. When I finished the test, I'm like, okay, here I am. I'm ready. Well, all the brokers were out there to take this, but nobody was out there to give me any of this. So what was I going to do? And I, I, I just went outside the box. I just looked. I, I, I got some books. I go, this is not me figuring myself out. I couldn't figure it out. I didn't know who I was at this point. I was starting all over again. You know, it's almost like playing your instrument, you're learning G, C, D, but there's no soul in it. You, where, where's, you, where's, your, you, where's your body in this? And then I was getting lost. And then I found you guys, Greg, I found you on YouTube, Googling, trying to figure you and a couple of other people out there. And I go, well, this guy has a lot of personality. You, you can be you. And once I figured out I could be me, that's when it started working. Does that make sense? Am I making yeah. sense on that? Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess me being a bull in my head, I, I was going to take, no, I had to prove to myself, you got to, Stefan, you can't quit. You got to get something. You got to succeed. You got to do something to prove to yourself as a man. And that was my whole thing. Whatever I did, I had to, I had to get from A to Z. I had to get there. And I didn't know what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. Sometimes I don't think, I just do. People who think too much never do. That's what I do now. <laughs> true. Okay. Yeah, very so, much. I keep telling Matt that all the time. You know, stop oh, thinking. Oh, shut up. <laughs> don't, don't overthink. <laughs> There's it. plenty I mean, of doing. Yeah. So, so my whole thing is don't overthink it. Sometimes you just yeah. have to do, and it's going to work out. Um, okay. Got my listing. Oh my God. This is, I can't believe it from, from, I bet you're not thinking about selling your home this year. Are you? And the guy caught me off guard. My first one. He's like, I actually am. I was like Ralph Crandom on the phone. Humba, 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 humba. I didn't know what to say. Went down, I closed that deal, closed it, sold his house, got another one from the phone, and then I got another one. I mean, 
it just happened. It happened without without me wanting it to happen. It happened. It just happened. But it happened when you're putting in the hours, like Derek practices keyboards, putting in the work, people going on Facebook Live, people going, what is Stefan doing? He, what is he just calling people all day? What's he doing? That's what I was doing. And then I went dark. When the three closed, I came back alive. Now here I am again. The proof, hey, I closed three <laughs> in one week. Three in one week. So everybody that made fun of me, Fuck you. <laughs> you know? You and everybody that everybody had my back and everybody that has not done it and followed me and is watching me, you can do it. Mm -hmm. Don't let people and they are. you. Don't let people get in your head. You can do it. Yeah, yeah. they absolutely I, are. I mean they're already they're already looking up to you, Stefan, because they're they're seeing the example that you set and they're following in your footsteps and encouraged by the uh, by the results that you're seeing, which is awesome. Absolutely no, awesome to see. Anything could be done. I mean I mean mm -hmm. Derek Sherinian Okay, big Van Halen fan. Okay, he's a studio. He's a great musician, Derek Sherinian. Me, I was more into the rock and roll, more like just looking cool, guitar hung low. You know, I didn't care about theory. I I like songs, but Derek wants to know its instruments. And then one day, here's this guy who's three chord Joe next to fucking Mozart. I called him up because the maestro called me up and wanted me out my band to play at his party, and that was Eddie Van Halen and Derek. Did I make did I make your dream come true? That was awesome. That was on my bucket list and because of Stefan, I, I got to play with Eddie Van Halen and that was mm -hmm. very awesome. And it was supposed to be with Billy Idol was supposed to play because at the time Derek was in Billy Idol's band. Right, Derek? Right. You remember? Right. It was it was yep. it was yeah, it was like a whole at Eddie's house so at happened? a party. So what happened to Billy Idol? Uh, he 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 didn't want to come to the gig, I guess. I guess he got stuck <laughs> in traffic. He yeah. came to the so we played, he came to the sound check. We played, we played with uh, Eddie anyway, so it was awesome. What a memory! I mean, it was yeah. amazing, for real, yeah, very surreal. And you could go on YouTube, Eddie Van Halen's backyard party, and most there of the is. footage is with Derek. It's with Derek. <laughs> That's awesome. Great. So Derek, let's Great. talk about uh, let's talk about Sons of Apollo a little bit because we've got about 10, 15 minutes left. <clears throat> so. So you're basically you're at this point where you have this this amazing band and you want to really give it everything you possibly can. So you're throwing everything in the kitchen sink at, at promoting this, right? I mean, just like just like Stefan, like hitting the ground running in Pasta Robles, like you, he's throwing everything into it. You're throwing everything in the Sons of Apollo, which is really fascinating because you're you're working on building up your your Twitter following. You've got two other guys in the band that are something like three and four hundred thousand followers respectively. They've done yeah, a phenomenal amazing. job, but. Yeah. yeah, they're doing a great job. So what are you doing to kind of follow in their footsteps, like learning from, in this case, it's Mike Portnoy and uh, and Ron uh, Bumblefoot Thal that has those, uh, yeah. you know, the majority of those followers. But what are you doing to uh, to kind of boost your following and, and get the word out on the new band? My, my numbers are going to go up uh, significantly after the band boosts. Uh, okay. It's going to, I'll see the fallout mainly from that. And that's going to give me the most, most uh, exposure is depending on once we start touring and then mm -hmm. getting traction with Sons of Apollo and putting the time in, you know, out on the road. And that's going to be very key is the next uh, 18 months of hitting all the key markets, hitting uh, all the European festivals in the summer, uh, spending significant time in the U.S. to make sure that we build strong presence here and on American rock radio. You know, a lot of moving parts. But we're doing all the – the first step, though, is you can do everything, all the promo, all the touring. But if your record is shit and you don't have the music, it's going to not have any traction. And we're yeah. all just very confident that this record that we made – you can hear uh, two singles. The video coming home is on YouTube, and then there's a, a video static single, uh, Signs of the Times. You can get a taste of what we sound like, Sons of mm -hmm. Apollo. But – I think that we've really, with all the players involved, it's like the Marvel superheroes. Everyone that's in the band is at the top of their instruments, and there isn't a band out there that has the pedigree and the talent all in one band, and the songs. And I just think it's the perfect storm, and I feel that it's going to just take off. If yeah. you could bang your, if you could bang your woman to Derek's music, then you got to hit home run, right, Derek? Because Derek goes home, he 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 tests, he brings home his women, and he bang, puts his on the Sons of Apollo, and he's banging his broad. So he's like, "You like that, Mama? Let's go." And I felt that hit. the Apollo record did very well in those sessions, where some of the earlier <laughs> records didn't really have the the uh, swagger. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's a little hard to do that to 3316, but that's another, yeah, it's another story. Yeah, like robotic. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, once again, for the people who are coming in there, do you realize who's in Derek's band, what he has? Go, Derek, tell them who you got in your band. Well, Mike, Mike Portnoy, my ex-bandmate uh, in Dream Theater, and we reunited in Sons of Apollo. He's a gallery of great modern drummer, Hall of Famer, you know. Yeah, it's top 25 of all time. Yeah, I mean, he's rated all over the world. Billy Sheehan, top, he's like the Eddie Van Halen of the bass. Totally mm -hmm. amazing, uh, famous bass player. Our guitar player, Ron Thal, Bumblefoot, played in Guns N' Roses for nine years after Slash. And I uh, never got a chance to really shine as a player because he's always just playing the parts. But he's like a freak, savant, virtuoso guitar player. I haven't heard anything like it. Just fucking amazing. And then the singer Jeff Scott Soto has a great ballsy rock voice. And together it's just a fucking great sound. It's classic rock, hard rock, but it's progressive also. And it's the perfect hybrid of technique and feel. You just don't hear it in bands today. Yeah. No, I just was uh, on back over here. I was listening to Coming Home. Posted a link of the YouTube onto the, 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 uh, the news feed here. Dude, that's some fucking oh, great, cool thanks. shit, dude. I like mm -hmm. that you. sound. That is way, yeah, way cool. It's I mean, classic did, did, rock. It's, it's like that's a, the least progressive, but it's like classic rock. It feels like the Who, Van Halen, like ACDC, all the great bands that we all grew up with and loved. And there's just a big hole. There's no bands playing like that. You know what Derek just did? Talk. You know what he just did? He opened up his own broker firm. That's what he just did. He rebranded himself. And he's going to re and he's making magic again. That's what you're doing, Derek. It sounds like. And I'm doing. calling him. And it's nice now because, you know, Mike and I are in control. We get to call the shots. We produce the records. And it's nice not to have to do the sideman thing and laugh at the singer's jokes that was popular when Reagan was president. <laughs> and, and not to play like when they try to make a new album, learn their <laughs> shitty songs and, and, and look at the crowd that just can't wait for the old hits to, to come by. You know, oh, it's, it's painful. It's painful. <laughs> and so it's good oh, to man, have your own fun. deal and, and to keep moving yeah. forward. I have a yeah, it's, it's I, great I have to be question. in control. I have a Go question, ahead. Derek. Derek, and then I'm sorry. Are, are you going to party or fuck around? <laughs> I'm fucking partying, baby. <laughs> I'm ready. So Derek, uh, ready? we I'm talked a little bit about. Stardom. I'm ready for stardom, just like Stefan. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so Derek, what are you doing? Uh, you, you've got some interests outside of music that you're kind of putting to good use to get uh, to get exposure, and this is this is a great lesson for for agents because some agents have a really hard time kind of bringing in their other hobbies and interests. They almost feel like they need to kind of lock away their private life. Now there's a lot of right. uh, musicians that feel that way too, that the only thing that faces the music industry is their musician side and everything else is kind of hidden in the background, but you've chosen to kind of leverage what else you've got going on and the other interests that you have in life to get press for what you're doing. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, I've been doing some jiggle work uh, in between the sessions, and I've been trying That's to parlay that into. <laughs> hey, jiggle work, good, 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 uh, good money yeah. in that industry. Yeah. Yeah. I hear, I hear. I, I wouldn't know, but I. You know, yeah. you know, there's the cougars. Since I'm 51, the cougars are younger than I am, so I have to go to the next one with the saber tooth. That are, you know. <laughs> Man, those Derek, women with new hips are always I'm, good. I'm like Richard Gere. Derek oh loves his abs when he, Derek Derek loves to go bend them doggy style and look at his abs. Oh come on, <laughs> have some clap. Come on, Stefan. No, All right. No, so I've been uh, no, so you know we've been trying to get as much as press as possible. I mean we've been able to have some success just based on the people's past credits, but we're trying to think outside the box. As I am being on this show, this wouldn't be a normal uh, press outlet that I would hit. So I'm trying to really branch out and meet new people and, you know, hoping that some of your fans and, and audience might, you know, even if one or two of them like what I'm saying and come to check out the band and like the music, then that's a success. And we have a, actually we have a lot of comments that I'm reading as I'm coming as I'm going down and as I'm coming in. They're really digging it. A bunch of people are hopping on, going, "What the fuck did I just jump in on? What is this, dude? I love Derek. You know, Dream Theater is amazing." So yeah, we definitely there's a lot of viewers that are watching this now and then we'll listen to this later. They're definitely you know fans of your oh, past cool. work. But the thing that I Great. think is uniquely interesting about you is that you've created your tribe. 
And I think, you know, Stefan is creating his tribe. Matt and I are, have, built, are, have built and are building our tribe. So the people that are out there, they, you need to identify who your tribe is and then play to those people. Because, Derek, you're not trying to play to the Taylor Swift fans. That's just not who your, who your fan base is, and you'll never convert them, you know. But you're playing to the That's group right. that recognizes what you're doing, and they see the art that you're putting into your music. Um, yes. And I think that, you know, both in both industries, it's uniquely – you have to be unique and stand out and know who you're talking to. That's what Matt and I talk about in Getting Out Business all the time, which is the actual sponsor of this show, which Matt and I always forget to answer, you know, promote. But, um, you know, in Getting Out Business, you talk about your perfect client, you know, or who your tribe member would be. Um, and I think that's most the most important thing to do. So when and where did you go back and identify, Derek, you know, your tribe? How did, did you ever kind of sit down and kind of knock that out? Like, this is the type, the genre, the age group, the sex, you know, whatever it is that are the most likely people to be listening to it and then play to that group. Or did you go, or did you kind of just meld it all from your past, past work? Well, tribe, I guess the technical word is, is demographic. So I guess my demographic varies. It's going to be younger musicians, aspiring musicians that want to get better on their craft. And then I think it's going to be um, older people, 40 to dead. <laughs> people that are just, you know, into music, classic rock. I think that our music has a little bit more classic rock, so I think we'll get a little bit of older people and progressive people. It's really hard to quantify. I can say gender, though, if you looked at the pie, it's very heavily favored in, on the male side. But I'm hoping with Sons of Apollo because we actually have some good songs, unlike a lot of the uh, other progressive metal bands, I think that we're going to be able to cross over and hopefully – have both genders at our shows. I think yeah, and I was, I was thinking songs. about that just over the last couple of days leading up to the interview. <clears throat> and that was the thing that I love the most about like the, the Falling Into Infinity album. The musicianship is great and the musicianship on all those records are great. And, and just like they were uh, there, there's a lot of great, you know, progressive bands that they all have great musicianship. <laughs> now some, you know, less than others, but for the most part, the thing that separates whether they become really massive uh, and especially have staying powers, the songs. So it still comes down to Derek, like putting in the work, being confident in who you are, but it, it really comes down to not just putting in the work on the musicianship side, but really making sure that the songs are strong because that's what catches people. That's what makes it hummable, singable, memorable. Um, and it's cool that you guys, yeah, you found someone like Jeff Scott Soto who can put those things together and then sing it, you know, in a, in a way that reminds people of club, the best of classic rock that they remember. So it kind of blends those elements together. Absolutely. Jeff is very listenable. You know, we wanted to stay mm -hmm. away from a lot of the cliches and progressive rock, the high, hey, I'm high, high opera <laughs> yes. or the breathy, <laughs> or the fake <laughs> like, I'm mad, damn it, and, but I really have nothing to be mad about type vocals where everyone can just say, dude, you're from fucking Poughkeepsie, and, and you live in your mom's house. Give me a break. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, man. It's just, we want to just make it very listenable and have a strong rock base. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, Derek, you're, uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that people uh, understood is that um, – you are you've been very into fitness for quite a while you've essentially kind of transformed your entire look i mean i've, I've seen uh pictures from you back in the day at various points and you look completely different than you looked before which is awesome yeah. you're very strict and, and very controlled about uh the way that you take care of yourself both in diet and exercise <clears throat> but you in, in terms of like expanding out you decided to leverage that and get some press for that and you actually successfully did it yeah, there was a couple of fitness magazines in uh, in Germany that I did some interviews for, and they were just interested because as a touring musician and being over 50, how how I stay in in shape. And I just basically talked about, you know, my journey and and you know what I went through and making a a decision at 49 before I turned 50 that I really wanted to turn. It was you know 50 is a scary number to hit. For, you know, man, it's like, fuck, I'm going to be 50, you know, years old. So getting old sucks, but being old and fat really sucks. And so <laughs> I just made a decision that I wanted to just be in in, uh, in UFC fight shape when I turned 50. And, and I hit the mark like three months before my 50th birthday. So I was really happy about that. And I've maintained it. I just turned um, 51 a couple – or last month. And so I've I've made a total lifestyle change. My weight maybe fluctuates. I, I got really low 
for a while to step instead of look like Tom Hanks in Philadelphia. All my friends are intervening. But I walk around, I walk around like at uh, welterweight, like at, at 170, you know, give mm-hmm. or take a pound. Yeah, that takes some serious good. dedication. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, and then when it comes to like both weight, health, and also with business making, getting off of your 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 ass and doing something about it, what that decision process, you know, you have to have a strong pull, a strong why, you know, that's, that's making you make make these decisions, so you don't become the North American, you know, couch potato, um, and just kind of become that creature that just kind of oozes off the couch at 50 years old. What was one of those things that drove you and pulled you forward on a daily basis to hold that? Because that's not an easy thing to do at any age. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I just, I just was determined, and I made it. I was at my fattest probably um, two oh five, so I was probably thirty five pounds over what I was now. And I just made a decision. It was like the most important thing in the world to me was to cut that weight. And I just, just made some dietary changes and started working out, you know, really hard. You know, not lifting too heavy, but like serious cardio, you know, five, six days a week. And I, I learned that if you weigh yourself every day and you stay on the program, you can lose healthy up to five pounds on the average a month. So if you make a mark and you say, okay, I want to lose 40 pounds, you just chart it out on the calendar and just stay on your program. And it's the consistency. It's just like stepping. If you keep calling, pretty soon you're not even going to think about it. And one of them is going to surprise you and say, wow, and, and there's a close. It's the consistency, though, that allows him to get to that point. And it's the same thing with, with the weight loss. You just have to fucking grind it and set your, your marks, your five-pound increments. And you can do now, it in really good. a month. Now, Derek, you, you – Actually, before you gained the weight, right around when we were 40, a little younger, you and I were working out because we were a little out of shape yeah. back then. And then we got into yeah. shape, and we were really like fight club, and then we fell off. Yeah. We stopped the right. Well, you held it longer. I had a, a good uh, two-year run, and then I fell off. But you've always kind of maintained yours pretty good. You you were even lighter. I mean, you got to look since you got married and, and, and all that. I mean, that usually happens, and that's okay. So you're not out on the prowl. You don't need to. To be chiseled and have that fight club look anymore. But you did. But you want. But but if you, but up here, the the beach. You know, up here mentally, that's the workout affects everything. It it affects your work. It affects your your whole lifestyle. It really does. When you're not feeling good out in here, it affects your day at work. It does. It affects your relationships. I'll, I'll I had a gig where I was making um, working out of the country, and I was making the most money I've ever made like three years ago. I mean, it was great. It was fucking great. But I was overweight. I was 200 pounds, and I didn't feel good about my body. No matter how much money I could put on the watch, the Rolex, or fucking whatever. But the bottom line is you take the Rolex off, and you look in the mirror, you're a fat fuck. And so it doesn't matter how much money you're making. It doesn't. So here's what it is. The bottom line is the wealth. My base is I know – no matter what's going on in my life, whatever harpoons or where I'm at financially, I know I wake up, my body weight is on point, and my talent and playing is on point because I fucking put the work in. And and no one can take that from me. And those are things that are within my control. And as long as I have that as the base, that allows me to be my personality and be whatever it is, love me or hate me. I'm going to be the way I am. And I'm Finally, at a point where I'm just fucking saying fuck it and, and taking the filter off, where I've had to like kind of curtail it because people don't want you to stick your head up too much. You know what? Fuck it. I know I'm the best. I'm proclaiming it. If you don't like what I'm saying, prove me fucking wrong. Get, knock me off. If you don't like it, I took your lunch. Now, fuck you. You want it back? Come take it. Fuck you, bitch. See That's what I attitude. teach? You see what I teach my people, Derek? I fucking love it. I love it. I'm yeah, glad. And I'm not saying this. I'm not saying it like to be a big. I'm saying I back it up. I believe every fucking word I just said. Hardcore. <laughs> and me too with the real estate. I'm fucking here to sell real estate to help people out. And you know what? The agents out here move the fuck aside because I'm fucking here. 
<laughs> Stefan Adika, <laughs> life coach, everyone. Yeah, life coach and, and all things. But no, but but see, that's that's the whole mental point that I want to get across here. Both yeah. Derek and Stefan have stopped giving a fuck about anything or anyone's opinion and just took the bull by the horns, went into massive action and made it their own. Mm -hmm. Everybody's waiting for permission from everybody else in their life. Can I take a yeah. next step forward? Can I do this? Can I say that? Dude, who gives a shit what everyone else thinks? Make it your own. Move forward. Be a bull in a china shop. Don't hurt anybody mm -hmm. or do anything illegal or, un or unethical, but bull push through the BS and the red tape and start taking what is yours today. Yeah. Otherwise, it will pass you by, and you'll sit there on your rocker at 80, year old, 80 years old and go, coulda, shoulda, woulda. You know what? Those are going to be the worst regrets you've ever had in your life. That's true. Yeah. That's right. get, now, get now. Get now business. Get now business. <laughs> That's it. Keys and Derek, I, lo I love that this is the other thing that I think people lose, especially when it comes to prospecting, growing the business, whatever the case is. You, you mentioned something that I think people probably missed, which is you decided it was the most important thing in your life at that point, which was which yeah. is awesome. And, that, and that's we, we just knew, we skip knew. over that a lot. I already knew the talent was going to be there. I knew that that mm -hmm. wasn't an issue. I already put the work in there. And at that point, it was just like, all right, you got to make it a priority. And and that, it is. And people will make so every excuse under the sun to not get in shape. Oh, I don't have the time to do it. Or, or mm -hmm. uh, I have injuries or, uh, you know, every yeah. excuse. You got to really want it. And so the first step is up here. Once you decide you're going to do it, and then you just just do it. It's not rocket science. Yeah. You know, the thing is, I mean, I, I have a couple of pesky little pounds that I've been wanting to get off. So I got tired and ticked off at what I've been what, what I've been doing in my workout. And this can be in business as well, guys. So I decided to life hack myself. And I decided that if I didn't have to be in front of a uh, in front of my computer for, for any kind of calls or anything else, I'd be up and walking. I bought myself a Fitbit. I track all my steps. I'm competitive. I do competitions every single week with other people. And I found a way to just fill those gaps in your day. So if you want to get in shape, get up and walk your fucking fat ass, you know, do circles in your office while you're on phone calls. If you want to prospect, fill that time on your lunch break, go out and do prospecting and have a sandwich on the road while you're out, you know, doing your, when you're out and door knocking from door to door. Do you have the time? You just don't have the desire. It's not a priority in your life to either do the calls, do the doors, do the networking or lose the weight. Derek found it and he prioritized it and he found a way to make it in your life. You just need to find where you need to fill holes in your life where you can actually do more productive activity because you know what? I have two blown out knees. I have, you know, bruises and blisters all over my feet, but I found a way to go out there and make my, do my walk, do my steps, get in the gym and do, do what I need to do. You guys can do that in your prospecting and you can do it in your fitness. Just start reallocating your time and you'll, you can, you can fill those gaps. Man, I'll, I'll say this, a final a point on this. I've figured out that if you can synchronize your physical and for my case, the musical and have those things in tune. And so in your guys' case, it would be your, your physical and your clothing and really just have that fucking dialed in. It's so powerful. I mean, I feel like a beast. Like I, can, I feel like I can go play with anyone on the planet. And it doesn't matter. I just did a tour uh, with Steve Vai, Yngwie Malmsteen, uh, Zach Wilde, Nino Betancourt, where I was in the house band, and I had to back up each of these A-list guitar players playing their uh, their shortened set. And so I had to be the, not only the chameleon to be able to blend to those styles, but I had to be able to hold my own against the solo wars, you know, between the two of them and, and be able to stand tall on that stage. And I just was fucking, I showed up on the tour, it was fucking 170, ripped, ready to go. And I just fucking great and you know i just can't That's emphasize awesome. enough <laughs> <laughs> just ripped off the names of four of the best guitarists of all time all right guys we gotta we gotta wrap it what's up i think it's been a pleasure thank you for including me on your show yeah, this has been amazing all right guys so uh, so derek remind people the name of the band place to go so that they get into your world and uh sign up for any updates and kind of start following you guys on the uh, tour sons of apollo on inside out sony records coming out october 20th uh, sonsofapollo.com on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Check this band out. It's awesome if you love classic rock, progressive rock, hard rock. We're the best of all of it, all in one stew. 
awesome October 20th, Sons of Apollo. Thank you so much. Cool. Stefan, why don't you remind people, as if they didn't already know, where they can uh, send you referrals in the lovely uh, you know Central what? Coast. Here, here's my phone number. Not, there you not go. that you know, people could see it, 818-419-7298. But you know what? Any agents out there that are just starting out, all joking aside, be, behind all my jokes, if you need somebody to dial with you or to give you a little tune-up and help you out, because dialing, when we're dialing, it gets bored, and you want to have fun with each other, I'll, I'm more than happy to you know, coach you in any way to make it fun and to help you get a, a lead and business. So you could reach out to, through Facebook or, you know, email me to stefadika1 at mac.com. Real simple. All righty. Very cool. All right. And as for us guys, as always, make sure to share the show with other agents that will get benefit out of it. Um, this particular show, make sure to share them and have a, a giant disclaimer on it because Stefan is all over it. Uh, I think if there's a, I don't know if there's an iTunes uh, like extra explicit, like a double E for extra explicit, but uh, we'll have to slap that label on this one. Uh, but make sure to share the show. Make sure to subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher, depending on the device that you're on. And Gregory, how should they reach us on Facebook? Just follow us. Uh, do not friend us. Matt will not friend you. I can't friend you. Um, but do follow us, guys. Everything that we're that you guys are seeing out there, what we're doing, please, uh, like Matt said, share it with everybody. But follow us on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook, guys. I do live prospecting calls majority of the week at yeah, 4:30 Pacific Standard Time, uh, so you can see how the live cold calls go. So you can see that it's not scary. But uh, Get Now Business, guys, is where you guys can get business within 90 days after taking our class. If you have a budget of $500 or less on a monthly marketing budget, we'll show you how to do door knocking, how to use everything except for cold calls and door knocking. Um, you guys can go out there and really make some money. We have uh, people that have gone through our course are now starting to uh, funnel back in. Stefan is a past uh, alumni of that. We have a couple other folks getting multi-million dollar listings, working with buyers, working with their sphere. You know, all kinds of things are taking place because what we're going to do is we're going to take the, 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 the blinders off of you and show you that the business can be sitting literally right in front of you. All you have to do is know what to look for. And that's, so that's what we're going to do. So go to Get Now Business. You guys will be able to see what we have to offer there. Um, and yeah. We can go from there, but um, you know, yeah, I, you know what, Greg? I gotta be honest with you because of your get now business. You know what? And I'm a guy covered with tattoos. People think you can't get get now business. I took your course, I applied it, and I got three closings this week, everybody. So it really does work, and I'm saying that because it works. I'm not a bullshit. Didn't pay him for that, and we didn't pay him for didn't that. Didn't pay. No. Um, <laughs> We know, but I'm really glad that Stefan is here. He can he can attest to that. I mean, Matt and I can toot our own horn all damn day, but it really comes down to the people that go through the courses um, that really see the successes. So, um, you know what, guys? We love you to absolute pieces. You guys are the reason why we do this show. That's why I do my calls. That's why Matt and I keep coming out with new products that you guys might want. Don't don't hurt me up, Johnson. I'm doing my damn thing. Um, and you know what? I think you guys go go check out Getting Out Business. Get a hold of Stefan. And as always, guys, peace out, ninjas. We go.